Russia's investigative committee confirmed today that the remains of Wagner leader Yevgeny Prigozhin have been positively identified, along with the nine others who died in a plane crash last week. We're joined by Fiona Hill, senior fellow at the Brookings Institution and a former White House Russia expert. Good morning, Fiona. Thank Hi, you so Lindsay. much for being here. So uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin claims he had nothing to do with this. Is there anyone in the diplomatic community who believes that? I doubt it. And I th look, I think what we can certainly say is he didn't order it not to happen. <laughs> Uh, because there are plenty of people who uh, were painting a target on Prigozhin's back. The system itself expected him to be taken out of the picture in some fashion. Um, I guess it was a question about what the method would be. And in fact, I think over the last two months has been more shock, not just internationally, but also domestically based on source reporting, that the fact that nothing had happened to Prigozhin and that he was allowed to walk around as if he hadn't indeed perpetrated a putsch exactly two months ago. You know, usually Putin's enemies tend to get poisoned or pushed out windows or shot. Why go to the trouble of bombing an airplane? Well, we don't know exactly how the aircraft was brought down yet, but I guess we'll find out more as things go along. I mean, I'm sure, again, that the Russian uh, government, the Kremlin, will accuse all kinds of other people about uh, carrying out this act if it's seen to be the result of an explosive device, you know, for example. But... It's so dramatic, uh, it's so spectacular, that of course one has to ask whether this was done for the, the demonstrative effect of it. And we have had some mysterious plane crashes in the past, uh, taking down Russian leaders. There was a very famous uh, general, Alexander Lebed, for example, who died in a helicopter crash. So it's not um, something that is unheard of. And in other settings as well, of course, we've had Pakistan, Bangladesh, China, where there have been uh, the uh, loss of key people in uh, plane crashes. So I think this is par for the course, unfortunately. And there is some symmetry, isn't there, to Prigozhin's dash to Moscow in that aborted mutiny when the Wagner Group brought down several Russian aircraft. Exactly. So this is also part of that idea of he who lives by the sword dies by the sword, an eye for an eye, the vengeance factor, it's baked into the system. There was a lot of clamour from the uniformed military and especially the Air Force uh, for some kind of retribution for this, whether it was in a legal form. But look, he took down a proportional number of people in a... Um, Russian military aircraft, as you've just said here. So again, there is um, a symmetry and a symbolism all of it, uh, in all of this that is inescapable in the Russian domestic context, as well as for the rest of us watching it from the outside. The Wagner Group has been so pivotal for the Russian military in the war in Ukraine. Now there are reports that uh, the Russian government is requiring Wagner fighters to sign loyalty oaths. What is this uh, going to mean the death of Yevgeny Prigozhin, what will it mean for the war in Ukraine? Well, I don't think it'll actually mean anything significant for the war in Ukraine in terms of uh, the military campaign itself. We were already seeing that Wagner was being uh, pulled out or was pulling out after uh, the um, actions in Bakhmut, uh, where they were in the thick of the, of the fighting there in that uh, city that, of course, you know, was so much of the focus of the carnage of the war over the last uh, several months. But it was already um, a precipitating factor in all of this series of events over the last two months. The idea that the Wagner Group were going to be dismantled and reincorporated or incorporated for the first time, rather, into the Russian military. And that was one of the factors that Prigozhin himself was citing as a reason for him making his march on Moscow. He didn't want to have his guys put under the command of the central Russian military. So I think, you know, what we can see from all of this is that Wagner was pretty crucial for these early stages, this first couple of um, uh, parts of the campaign in Ukraine. And now uh, the Russian government and Putin wants to have more centralised control. He gave Wagner a long leash and Prigozhin clearly took that leash far too far. Mm -hmm. You know, you're such a close study of Vladimir Putin. You've sat across the table from him. How should we think about his power in Russia now after this uh, likely assassination. There was a period of time after Prigozhin made that dash to Moscow where it seemed like elites, um, commentators in Russia felt more comfortable speaking out against Putin, against the war. He appeared to be weak. How does his standing look to you now? 
Well, and not only were other commentators speaking up, but Prokhorjan himself said this war was a mistake, mm -hmm. but it was basically he was acting because he wanted to make sure that the war was won. And that was kind of part of the, the theme of his, uh, of his revolt. Now, other commentators, as you rightly said, including you know, some senior generals, have been uh, bashed, uh, literally bashed back and uh, put out of the picture uh, for saying the same kinds of things. What Putin is saying with this assassination, whether, you know, he actually carried out or not, the message is going to be uh, very clearly uh, transmitted to everybody. Uh, no um, speaking out now, buckle down, everyone getting behind this campaign in Ukraine. That's why I say I don't think it's really going to change the way that the Russians are approaching this. And there is no room whatsoever for disloyalty. One of the things that Putin said that was very notable when uh, the uh, mutiny, the putsch was happening two months ago is that the traitors who carry this out will have an inevitable punishment. We've seen an inevitable death as a result of this, that everyone was foretold. I mean, we've all been expecting something like this uh, for the last two months. The message to the whole system is don't try anything. And even don't criticise, I would say, at this particular point, because we've seen so much action against people who have been speaking out. And Prigozhin may not be the last to be targeted. Fiona Hill, Russia thank expert, you so thank you so much for being here today. Thank you.